My mom like, <gasps> my mom in shock. Like, oh, mom is in shock. Mom is in shock, isn't she? So here is the place uh, for chicken. Before we would, we put the rabbits here, and it's all rain. And now I fixed the roof already, and I cover the white slant on site because sometimes when it rain, you can go on site and then make it like a water get inside here, and then it's all flooding. And I just clean on the floor. And then it dried for like three days now. And uh, going to put more decorate on it before we move. Little chicken here, the chicks here. I want slow love, uncomplicated such stable as we go. Consistent as we grow, I want slow love. No need to rush. I say it in my dreams. Strangers in my sea, I reminisce. The Here, just finished um, making the area for chicken, and we're gonna put chicken inside there to run around so they have more space to run around. And this area for when we want to see them play with them, and we're going to put it in here. And uh, well, we're ready to move the chicken in here, they're gonna be happy. So, they'll have the heat lamp here. I'm just getting the chicks out at the moment. They'll have this little space, the food, and then the silky that's been living in our cottage, it needs a bit of run around space, so she's just here. There's our silky. Oh, she, likes to, she likes to perch on things. Very curious bird. Very curious, very soft, very docile, interesting bird. 
And then we've put a, a net all the way around. This is to stop predator birds coming in and getting the chicks. And then out here, Damo's just put some waterproof stuff on the roof to make sure no water gets in. So this is our temporary bird enclosure. Um, won't be forever. Eventually they can join the flock and come out in the bigger area when they get bigger. But for now, the chicks will be in here. So I just want to give a little no BS, no flashy review of Lion's Mane. You know, I talk a lot, a lot about Lion's Mane on this channel. And honestly, I've been taking this stuff now for well over six months, in fact. And I want to tell you a little bit about my personal experience with it. So obviously different mushrooms affect different people differently. Not everybody has the same effects from different mushrooms. And, and I find that to be the case with my subscribers that have been trying this lion's mane and they've come back to me and they've said, look, Ryan, it's helped reduce anxiety. Some people have said it's helped them get off certain other drugs, um, more pharmaceutical drugs. Some people have said it helped them just feel a little bit more energetic, a little more in a good mood to face the day. And some people have had no effect, is the honest truth. But my experience with Lion's Mane, they make me feel very inspired. They really make me feel like opened, opened up. And really, I feel quite motivated with them. I feel inspired to create content, to do stuff on the farm. The suggested dosage of these particular lion's mane from Fruiting Body, which are the ones available here in Thailand, the link is below in description in the pinned comment, is two capsules a day. But I actually found that they're so strong for me that I cannot take two capsules a day. If I take two capsules a day, it just feels like overload. So generally, I'll use the Fadiman routine. If you want to look into James Fadiman, who actually with psilocybin mushrooms suggested that if you're going to microdose, you take one day on, two days off to let the system not build up any tolerance. Well, that's how I work with lion's mane. I'll have one day on and two days off, sometimes even longer. This is my genuine experience with lion's mane. Like I'm not just making this up. I'm not trying to sell you something. I love this mushroom. I think it's got so much potential to help people day to day in a way that a lot of pharmaceutical drugs try to do, but cannot. And I really want to keep hearing your feedback. Many people email me, they message me, they leave in the comments their experience with lion's mane and the other mushrooms such as reishi. And so I really like to hear that feedback and keep giving it to me because then I can share it on the channel. So we were wrong guys. We were very wrong. The bike that we bought in the previous episode, previous vlog on this channel. burst into flames. Luckily, Damo got off it. And here it is now coming. And we're about to see the damage. So they're not actually driving it. They're pushing it along with another bike. I don't know who this is that's bringing it, but we had a fire. So, oh, I can see the front burn now. Yeah.
So the devil wants it over here in case it, it goes off again. So you can see the fire was here. What happened? You know, at the start, and then the fire come here. Boom. Fire come from underneath? Yeah. And did it get your foot or not? Huh? Did no. it fire get your foot? It just jump out. Jump out. Yeah. And then when you kick start it, the engine start and then set, set it, it on spark, fire. It sparked somewhere underneath here. So it's very crazy and dangerous. And you now we're going to return this to him. Some people say it's oh, really scary. So we're going to leave it here. Let's see. We went on a big drive yesterday. No problem, yeah? No problem, yeah. But uh, today I think it's about the oil leak. So you're going to talk to the guy. He might say no, you know. I don't know. But we need to... Say like you can't keep this. <laughs> we'll get a new bike and put it on the side. Oh my god. Some people on the vlog are gonna say, You two are stupid, stupid to do that. But no, we couldn't know, could we? Nobody knows. And also it's it's for here, you know, they also buy a second hand, you know. We don't know. We don't have big money to buy a new motorbike, you know. So second hand is a is a choice that for us. And uh you know, I think it's fine, you know, like, but I don't feel like I'm going to be, uh, like, explode like this. It's scary for me. Not, not anymore. I'm sorry. So we didn't get any footage, though, of it on fire, did we? No. It's not something you stopped to vlog, really, is it? So we were wrong. We were wrong on this one, but we couldn't have helped it. You see the after result. This is it. I still have to run to fight the water. Why is the water? There was one subscriber that commented, he said, I would never buy that bike. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. Yeah. Nobody got hurt. That's the main thing. Nobody got hurt. My mom, my mom like, <gasps> my mom in shock. Like when I come back and then I say, I'm going to take another bike. I say, it's on fire. My mom's, oh, why? <laughs> why? Why is that happen? And oh my God. So say bye bye. This is the dog driving the bike. Bike home. How can I do I? See, look at his bike. His bike is all, he's all knackered. <laughs> so the dog driving home. These are the sights that you see in Thailand. So on a serious note, this could have gone very wrong. The tank was full of petrol, and if that fire had got in that petrol tank this thing would have become a bomb. We, we messed up, you know, we messed up. We, we made a decision that we thought was fine. I've, in the past, purchased many second-hand bikes. These things uh, ran to high heaven with no issues. And we were even more sure about it because it came from a mechanic. So it came from a guy that fixes these things for a living and seemed to know what he was talking about. Uh, we couldn't have known that there was a leaky, some leaking petrol at the front, which is what this is a product of. Maybe it's like an engine flood and a leaking petrol. But we felt that coming from a mechanic and looking in the condition that it was, and being a 2008, uh, that it would be fine. And we also had him come and check it after we bought it. A few days later, he came and checked it again. And so having it had checked out, having have, having had it checked out two times before from a mechanic and uh, seeing no issue we really couldn't have we couldn't have foreseen this um, you you live and you learn you live and you learn you make mistakes sometimes sometimes you're right sometimes you're wrong I bought a few second hand cars no problem this is our old bike and this has been going on for years and years and years been to the been to the garage many many times to get certain parts replaced and whatnot. We just couldn't have foreseen that this thing would blow up. But it has, and now, luckily nobody got hurt. And maybe it's a bit of a warning to anybody out there. Um, I would say that when you buy a second-hand bike, get it checked out by two mechanics so you get a second opinion. Um, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know how to check. I don't know anything about bikes. Um, we never smelled, there was no smell of any petrol, we would know that, we're not stupid. We, wouldn't, we would know, okay, there's a smell of petrol, this is a problem. Uh, but there was none of that, so 
in this case we just it just this just just happened and so um maybe it's a warning a warning for us for the future if you're in thailand get it checked out by two mechanics and and it's not even to say that even if you paid a bit more money that it's going to be better it's not always to do with how much you paid for something um just because you pay more for something doesn't mean it's going to be okay if it's second hand there's always going to be issues so the next step for us is going to be um to buy a new bike um she's going to talk to this guy and see if she can return the bike part of it but i, I don't know and even if we can't it doesn't matter um it has got a guarantee for one month he guaranteed it for us he said for one month he guarantees that there'll be no problem with it and we've had it for what un about a week and it's blown up so um we we do have kind of a right to return the bike part but i think we'll keep the cart just telling them that this, this could have been serious but we didn't know did we and we couldn't know because he's a mechanic a bike mechanic and he checked it out for us and he gave us the guarantee didn't he the oil come the oil come to the spark i'll come to the spark plug so we've learned a little lesson here and i think the next job will be to get another bike oh he's in shark Amazing shark, isn't she? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Amazing shark. So here she is, the replacement bike. Blue one, not red, so it goes with a blue roof. Got all the kids, all the kids here. Fran, Owen, Neil, Za, Hugo, Tess. I'll just show you. It's much better actually, it's newer than the last one. This is a Honda Wave, the other one was a Suzuki. Uh, but he promises us that this is not gonna be a problem. He gives us a guarantee, although he gave us a guarantee last time, and it was a problem. But what can you do? It's got less miles on it, this. It's got 10,355, the other had 20 odd thousand. And we found out what happened with the other one is that the engine had flooded and then that's when it caught fire the next time it started. So something along those lines. Her dad drives a second-hand bike. I bought many second-hand bikes in Thailand, probably about five or six. Uh, we've never had a problem. We show our life on this channel, so we show many good things that we do, you know, with the kids and with what we build and the good choices that we make. But nobody's perfect, and we make, we make bad choices. We make mistakes. We... It's not even that you know it's a bad choice at the time, you think it's a good choice, but you you find out later, you know, you make mistakes, people make mistakes, and that's it, so... One, two, three, four. Run like that, not How do you do it? I do one, two, three, on it like that. One, okay. two, three. Well done! I wonder where you go When we're in the same space You're more like a ghost In between a place And a feeling So quiet 